everybody. Thanks for joining us here today for Crafting Your Images with Topaz Plugins, presented by John Barclay. Hey, John. Hello, Nicole. Thanks for having me back. Yes, we're very excited to have John back with us. John Barclay is a pro photographer and workshop leader, and today he's going to be demonstrating how he is using the latest Topaz software in his creative workflow. Um, that includes our latest Topaz Clarity, so I'm super excited to see how he's working with that new plugin. John is an award-winning freelance photographer and, as I said, a, a workshop leader. He's based out of Bucks County, Pennsylvania. He is also an inspirational speaker who has been presenting his program Dream, Believe, Create to audiences around the country. His work has been published in a number of magazines and books used by a number of different people for advertising as well as us <laughs> and is treasured by a number of private collectors. So he's also one of our favorite presenters here at Topaz. So I'm very excited to have him back with us and I know a lot of you are as well. So with I bet that, you say that to all the presenters though, right? Well, no, I'm kidding. Not I'm to the kidding. whole That's webinar audience. <laughs> 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 All right, let me go ahead and turn it over to you, John, and you can go All ahead. Right. <laughs> yeah, All right, I just had to uh -huh. show my screen. I'm sorry, folks, but uh, Nicole and I get along quite well, and it's fun to pick on her once in a while. <laughs> so thanks. But thanks uh, to my friends at, at Topaz for having me back. I sure appreciate it. It's always nice to come back. And, uh, super excited about uh, Clarity. I really am. So we'll certainly be discussing that today. By the way, Nicole, everything's switched over fine. You see my screen? Yes, I do see your screen. Good. We're good. good. Excellent. Uh, and so we'll cover uh, Clarity today for sure because it's really, really good and game changer for me and my, my workflow for sure. Uh, black and white, we'll uh, jump into that for a little bit. Uh, detail three, which was still great, and then I have had some questions asked um, prior to the the webinar today from a number of people saying, "Okay, so now I have detail and I have a topaz adjust and I have clarity. How do I? When do I? Do they overlap and all those types of things?" So hopefully we'll address at least some of that today, and then Nicole and maybe in the uh, in part where the questions are certainly help me to answer some of those questions, but I think we can get you there pretty easily. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the first image here and introduce you, and for those who haven't seen it, or even if you have, uh, the new Clarity. It's going to take just a few seconds here to go through and load the presets. It'll do that each time we open up. You can see all the sliders over here to the right being preset to the different uh, preset categories. Uh, there are a few subtle changes that are worth noting here, and, and I sure hope and I, I suspect I know uh, that moving forward this will be the way the interface will start to look on some of the other plugins as well from Topaz. You'll notice now the collections over on the left side are by category type really, you know, architecture, documentary, landscape. And then so once I, right now I have landscape highlighted and all those uh, presets that loaded will be these over here. And once again, as you roll over them, you have a much bigger preview than we used to have. Gives you a good opportunity to take a look at what that preset's gonna look like and pre-visualize it pretty easily there. Uh, and then we have the, the normal uh, controls up along the top and how we can have side-by-side -side screen should we want to do that. Um, we can, it's now original versus processed here. Uh, we have our navigator along the top. We have a loop to go in closer and I can move that around should I want to to see different parts of the scene. This mask one is the one we're going to spend a little time on because that's huge. It's a big time game changer. A couple of people as I've been talking to friends realize that it's really the best way to be doing masking now. It's great. And then of course we have the histogram which I find essential, especially when we're doing contrast type moves, which is what we'll be doing here. So I'm going to go back to the navigator here. And then on the right side uh, we have Clarity, which is the new magic, uh, which has these sliders. And then I'll just tease you with the masks because we'll talk about that at length. And then we also have uh, HSL, which you'll really find, or typically find rather, in your raw converter or in Lightroom. Um, 
Big difference, though, will be this mask, and we'll cover that in a second. So we now have really great control. Normally, I haven't done a lot of color adjustments in plugins. I've usually used Photoshop. This will change all of that because the the HSL sliders down here, which is hue, saturation, and luminosity, are really good, and we have masking capability. So that's kind of the interface in a, in a nutshell. What I like to to suggest that you do, if you want to understand what these are doing, my right now the way I'm describing it to folks who ask is uh, clarity is very similar to the clarity slider that we find in Photoshop or more, more appropriately Adobe Camera Raw or that same tool in Lightroom. However, if, if you've used that, it's one slider and it just does one thing and it's um, doesn't have fine-tuned controls. Now we have four, we've broken it up into four levels, if you will, of adjustment. So what does that mean? So micro contrast is when the contrast range is very close to each other, uh, and so a lot of things are going to be adjusted, uh, whereas high contrast will be towards the, uh, towards the whites and the blacks, if you will. And the easiest way to demonstrate that is to go overboard here. So I'm going to pull this slider way up. And so when I do micro contrast, it's it's doing a lot of small contrast work, and thus it looks way overdone, and we would never do that. But let's compare that to the high contrast, and you'll notice it's not near as in your face, but these whites on the buildings or the brights on the buildings got a lot brighter, the darks got a lot darker. And then not only can we do those, but we have something in between. So we have the the medium contrast a little more than that high contrast did, and low contrast. I like to go through this so that you understand what's happening with the sliders. What makes everything really different, however, is when we click on this, masks. Look what we have now. So for both clarity and hue, saturation, luminosity, we have an associated mask. And here it is. If I rolled this open, you'd see the mask for this. So let me pull this up. So now what this allows me to do, and let's talk about the masking capabilities for a second. The, you know, the normal reveal and hide uh, are there. And you can go forward and backwards, and you can invert the mask. That's important. And then you can clear everything back to its original, right? So. We have a brush, but not only do we have a brush that we can use, we have an edge-aware brush, which is what Topaz does a great job with. That edge-aware is doing a good job of finding the edge of where you're brushing and giving you a more refined mask. But we also have a normal brush. A normal brush is just going to lay down paint, right? Black or white paint, that's all it's going to do. And then we have a color-aware brush. We also have gradient. Come on. Why is that not clicking? There we go. We have a gradient type where if I go like this, you'll see with that gradient mask up here, you'll see the mask. So we have a gradient very much like Photoshop. Let's undo that for a second. We have a radial type, which is a circular. So as I draw out, and by the way, look, it's additive, right? So I can make two or three or four or whatever uh, radial masks if I want to. And then we have reflected, which is like you would use along a, 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 a sunset or sunrise, where you need that band in the middle to be uh, to have a, a specific gradient on there. So let's undo those. Hopefully, you're starting to go. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. So, but we're not done. I'll go back to the brush here for a second. We have color range capability. Really cool. So you'll notice what it did automatically up here is it's tr it just it's a kind of a preset. But let's say I just wanted to go to the sand. I would go here, and I would go to the sand and drop my point there. And notice over here in the mask now. Remember, in a mask, white reveals and black conceals. So right now, the black is masking out what I don't want to be touched. But what I do want to be touched is here. And I have some control over that color range capability, the size of it, and also the sensitivity of it. 
can make it more sensitive, right? And that kind of controls it. Now you might be saying, well, wait a minute, I don't want to go into the water or go into the huts. Not a problem because we can do what I'll show you here coming up. So let's, let's accept that. So let's say at this point I wanted to do an adjustment on a specific part of the image. In this case, I'm choosing the sand. I wouldn't normally in this image. I'm just, again, trying to show you the concept and the ideas, which is my style in these webinars. It's not necessarily create perfect images, but more to to give you the concepts and the ideas so that you can then apply them to your images. Okay, so what we could do, for instance, here right now, is I could go now up to these uh, contrast sliders, and I could start to add, and I'm going to overdo it so you can see it, a whole bunch of contrast to the sand. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to click the navigator. Here's before. Here's after. And notice it's just affecting the sand. That's a big deal. I mean, it's really tremendous capability to isolate your adjustment with really great masking. But, but we're really not done. So I'm going to put the mask back on here. Let's say again, I don't want it to flow over to here. Not a problem. Let's go get the brush, and we'll get a normal brush, which again is just brushing down paint. I'm going to make the brush size a little bit bigger, make the hardness a little bit harder. And by the way, if you, you know, normally you can hit the bracket keys and it'll make your brush bigger or smaller. It will as long as you've clicked. The last click you make is on the brush size. Then I can use my bracket keys, which I'm doing right now, and make it bigger or smaller. So now I can come in here and paint. Whoops, I'm painting with the wrong color. I'm going to go to hide. Sorry. Um, I can come in and paint with black. And looking while looking at my mask, and I can further fine tune that mask. I can take it all that adjustment, all out of the row of houses, and now, for all intent and purposes, right, that adjustment is only happening on the sand. So hopefully, there's a whole bunch of you know, wows going on right now because there should be. That's great masking capability. And yes, I've already spoken to Nicole, and moving forward, you'll see the same masking capability being added to the other great products. And as you know, those other great products that you may already own are upgraded typically for free. So as they add those capabilities, you'll have that added to it. So just by way of review, we have masking with a brush, with gradient tools. We have different brushes, edge-aware brush, color-aware brush, and normal brush. And uh, we can adjust the size and strength of all that. But the really cool one is this color range. So the last part of it, just to finish this idea of masking right now, is this smart feather. So what's that do? Well, the smart feather says, I want to, and normally when we do a selection in Photoshop when we did it, we absolutely always wanted to feather that selection. So the transition between the selection and what we're not selecting is smooth. You don't see it. It's not an obvious Photoshop technique, right? It's a blending in, in together. And so that's what's happening with this. And I'll overdo it again, but look at my selection up here in the top right of the mask. It's, it's really fuzzy now because it's creating that radius of transition. I can make it feather aware, which is again is using that edge technology to do that, and I can use contrast and mask strength. I can make the mask brighter. Yeah, it's just saying that's a much stronger mask. I typically use that mask strength to be what it is at default. By the way, if you ever need to go back to default, just click on the name of whatever it is, and it'll click it back to its default setting. So. Masking, really powerful, big deal, uh, a big deal rather, inside of a Clarity at this point, and in the others come, and, and I can't wait for it to come to others because it really is tremendous, and, and we'll review it here as we go through a couple of examples. So to finish up this particular one, I'm going to go down and reset all, go back to reset all, and what I'm going to do is just show you uh, how great the presets are too. Um, Again, you're not guessing what does Spiceify mean and what does it do. Well, you've got to click on it and find out. Now we have these great categories over here uh, and collections, I guess they call them, with presets that seem to make sense. And so I'm going to come down here to Sunny Day. Let's just see how well that does. I'm going to get my navigator back here so I can go before. So this is before and after. 
you know, I think you can see by the, the effect it's having that Clarity is a great name for this particular tool because it is really clarifying, I guess, if you will, you know, the image. But once again, if you want to, and we're not going to do it here because we'll do it on other images, but if you wanted to fine tune this, you can start using those masks and color sliders. So let's just take a minute at least and go down here to how you might typically use the hue saturation. So notice you have an overall saturation, so that means I can bump up the saturation. We'll make it look gaudy here. Right? You would never want to do that, but again, I want to show you that that's going to affect all of the colors. It's very common, I would suggest, that you might want to go what, you know, 0 0.05, 0 0.04 a little bit, right? But if you wanted to just affect that blue sky and affect the saturation on the sky, you could do that and then mask that out where you didn't want that. So if, let's say you had a blue on these doors or windows. Uh, and also blue in the sky and that blue saturation, no big deal. You would just roll open the mask and then get yourself a brush with the normal and then you would paint that out of that area and remove that. Whoops, sorry about that. So, so and, then, and then the luminosity is another one that I tend to use quite a bit in when I'm doing my raw conversions and now you'll have it to do here. So if you have a color, and we'll see this later as well, you can darken that. So the luminosity, unlike saturation is doing just what it's saying, it's saturating the colors. The luminosity is affecting the light, l brightness or darkness of that, the, tone, the tonal value really, I guess uh, you'd say, of that uh, color. And you can do it on a color specific basis. So lots of control uh, over your contrast. Let me get rid of this, go back to my navigator, and come back up here. And then what I would suggest you do as you're learning this particular interface is I would pay attention to what the presets are doing to the sliders. That'll give you a really good idea for your images moving forward as to what you might want to do if you're if you're doing these sliders on your own without the presets. But it's a great idea, and once again, I've said it in every webinar, just because the preset has them there doesn't mean you can't change those sliders to be something else. Okay, so that should be a good overview. I'm going to cancel out of that. Overview of what's going on with Clarity. And we'll uh, review others as we go through here. As a matter of fact, we'll do it here. All right. So I've, I've actually showed this image before, um, but I think it'll be a, a really valuable demonstration of just how great of a tool this Clarity is. And then we'll also do two other of their plugins as we go through this. So first, what I'm going to do is show you a potential workflow, I guess, for you. So it's going through and building all those presets. And we'll let it finish that. And instead of doing the work first, I'm going to go ahead and create a mask. And I'm going to go to color range. But notice it, it automatically goes to her face. And black conceals, white reveals, right? But that, that's pretty close. But notice, again, I can make changes to this and the size of it. And I'm going to let I'm going to leave that uh, the night on the back that black writing for, on purpose so that just as again by way of reminder as we move through here. What black reveals, white conceals, no big deal because what I'm going to do is I'll hit OK and then this little square here on the mask up next to the reveal hide that'll invert that mask and I want to do that because white reveals, black conceals. Now I'm able to do some adjustments on this woman's face, um, to, and it's only going to affect that. It's going to you know, spill over, if you will, to the, the writing on the wall, but as you can probably guess, I can use a mask uh, to do that. Surprisingly enough, as I was looking through the presets, this particular one worked really well. So watch this. Look at her face and how wonderfully well that brightened that up. Let me go to the navigator here. Here's before, here's after. So let's let's kind of investigate what happened. Well, let's look at the sliders here. Micro contrast up to 50, uh, low contrast up to 36, right? So this, that's what I was doing is I was putting this through its paces to understand what's happening. Again, doesn't mean that's how you need to leave them. You can adjust them further. 
The key, though, is don't get yourself stuck in just these sliders. Recognize the value of the tone sliders below here. The black level does just that. And notice it's, it's black to the left and, and, and lighter to the right. That'll help you understand as you pull it to the left, it's going to make it darker. Pull it to the right, it makes it brighter. So this is what, whenever you do contrast work up in here, you're going to affect the tonal levels. And this allows you to bring those back and in this case, actually, I'm using those tonal values to do some work on the brightening of this very dark exposure on this woman's face. Remember also to always take a peek at that histogram and what's going on up there so that you're not clipping your highlights on the right or clipping your shadows on the left. So in this case, I could arguably make it brighter. I don't want to, even though I have some room on the histogram on the right. I'm pretty happy with it there. If I didn't want quite so much contrast, in her face, I could bring that down a little bit so it softens the detail a little bit. And I can now go and get, in this case, I'm going to get a normal brush. And I'm going to hit that brush here. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I can come over here and I can paint in this. Let's bring the mask back up so you can see what I'm doing here. And notice right away, I've gotten rid of that adjustment on the writing on the wall. So now the only thing that's being adjusted is the woman's face and her hair up here. I'm going to make this brush a little harder here. Actually, I'm not sure I want that adjustment to happen on her hair. I want that hair to be nice and dark. So I just paint with that mask. And now all that's being affected for sure is this woman's face. So not only can you mask, but what you should be understanding here is that mask is additive. So the mask we created originally on her face was done through the color range here. And then what I did was add a brush and mask continued to create that mask or refine that mask and paint in or out the effect that we're looking for. Okay, so let's, let's see if we can't just go one more step further here and go to the hue saturation. I'm going to bring that here. I'm going to bring my masks for that hue saturation layer up. And I'm going to do a very similar thing. I'm going to go to the color range. And this time, I'm going to bring that color range point onto the wall and kind of play around with that a little bit. I think somewhere over here, I'm going to make the size of it a little bigger. I'm going to make the sensitivity a little, let's see here. A little less. Uh, okay, let's get that to here. And that's allowing me to do a pretty quick mask here. Do the same thing. I'm going to invert that one. And in this case, I can go and I'm going to take the luminosity of that wall. It's kind of an orange tonality. Let's see what happens with the orange. Bring that down. Okay, what did I do? Oh, I need to do the reveal, don't I? No, how come my mask didn't? Hang on. Looks like when I hit this, it didn't. There we go. I must not have hit my, um, what's the name of this again? Thank you. I, I forgot to hit the, I hit the invert, but it didn't invert. So now it has. So here we go. Now you can see what's happening is that mask is allowing me to now affect the, and again, remember the luminosity is making it darker. The saturation, I can make it a little more. Now that's sort of what I remember that wall looking like. And look how nice of a job it's doing around her to not affect her. Remember, though, I can feather that mask a little more, which I think I'll do, and make it a little more edge aware. And I'll now so hit OK on that. I can go get that brush. And I can hide, if I want to, that effect of that, because uh, that's affecting that orange on her shirt as well. So I can go in and paint with black. I can paint with that black on her face to make sure that that hue and saturation, because she does have an orangish tinge to her face from the light that's reflecting. And there we go. I mean, that, that's a lot of power within one plug-in. And I think you can now start to understand why Clarity for me is a game changer. If this image doesn't get you there, I don't know what will. Um, we just we've just done an awful lot of work on an image that was 
way underexposed on her face, kind of bright on the wall because of the, the light that was in that situation, and created a pretty good final output of this. So let's go ahead and accept that this time and just remind you of other things that we can do. We can now go in to detail three. So to answer the questions that some of you have had, and I'm going to hit reset all to make sure my, because the, the, the filters tend to all be sticky settings, which means it's going to remember the last thing you did in this particular plugin. So I always am in the habit of, of resetting all. Okay, so we did micro contrast adjustments and so forth. So why would we use Topaz Detail? Because we've already worked on some of that contrast, which, which in effect is adding apparent sharpness. But think about Detail 3 as your, is a, the best program for creative and or output sharpening. So at this point, and on this one, I'm going to use what I've learned in the past, and I've showed it, I think, on this particular image. This blur size, rather than use all of the, the tools up here, on this one, because we've done a fair amount of work in clarity, if I just bring this up to about 10, let's let it finish doing its work. I'm going to click before, after. Look at specifically her face and how insanely sharp that is now. Do it one more time. Before after. Hopefully that's transferring um, you know, through a, sometimes a webinar. The, the image isn't quite, just trust me on this one. It, it's spectacularly sharp with using that blur size. And I find that works great for faces a lot of the time. Um, and so you could use these tools up here and, and start adjusting the small details. And I would be very careful. But notice her face now. It's almost overdone. It's too much for my taste, even with that little bit. So I would use just that little move in um, Topaz Detail down here, the, the de-blur. And that's going to do a great job. Other times, I would still go ahead and use the capability that's in here to be able to use the small, the medium, and the large details and, and have control over how you want to have the sharpening throughout the image. In this case, it's really just your face we're interested. I want that background to be soft. But if we've got a more traditional landscape, I would probably use very carefully and, and, and gingerly these controls here from within this piece of software. Okay, let's accept that. So now all we've done is we've added a little bit of sharpness, well, a lot in my mind, but a little bit of sharpness to her face. I'm going to now go and do one more thing and remind you how great this piece of software is. So we'll go into black and white program that, uh, that Topaz has. That's actually what we're going to end up with, but let's show how we got there. So I'll hit reset. And that's, that's the base. So once again, you have these collections. And these are more like the new clar Clarity. Uh, you, you have the uh, uh, presets or effects that you have an idea of what they're going to do. In this case, I'm going to go to the Platinum collection. I'm going to come down here to the Platinum. Uh, actually, I think I did four. Let's see that. There we go. I kind of like that look. But let's remind you that you have control over that. So you can go and click the, the uh, filters up here and go through each one and see what effect you're going to get, even in addition to the preset. Remember, a preset is just presetting things for you. You can then have control over that. This one has just the white, which is none. And then, just a reminder here, you have some more um, exposure capabilities right from within here. So if you wanted to use the Topaz Adjust feature, which is built into this, and that's this adaptive exposure and regions, you can certainly do that and, and add a little bit of a look, which I think I will in this particular image. Uh, I can add some detail here. We're not going to do that now at all because we certainly have taken care of that already. We can open up the basic exposure tab, and here we have the ability to adjust things like contrast and brightness. I'll bring that brightness down just ever so little. Uh, and there you go. I mean, just that simple by using a preset, and then uh, with your ability to fine-tune that preset, 
Uh, and then you can even go down and do some finishing touches, and we'll just touch on that real quickly. We can put a border on there, and there's different types of borders that you, you can select uh, from this drop-down box. Okay, all the grungy, all, all these great effects uh, that you can add right on the fly. So, review. We use the new um, Clarity to to do that work there and work on brightening up her face and, and work on the background wall. Uh, we use Detail 3 to add wonderful sharpness to her face and then black and white uh, capability to, in black and white effects, to create this platinum effect, sepia tone, wonderful stylized black and white image of this wonderful woman from Cuba. All right, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. All right. So what we're going to do here is attempt to give you, because I think the biggest confusion is going to happen between adjust and the new clarity. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and create a background layer that's either Command or, or Alt, what is it, Alt or Command? Gosh, isn't that terrible? I always get it wrong. But on, on a Mac, which I am, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's Alt or Option, I guess. So I'm, I'm hitting on a Mac, uh, Command J. I'm going to make two layers here. One of those I'm going to call Adjust. The other one I'm going to call Clarity. Okay, I'm going to turn Clarity off for a minute. We're going to click on that Adjust layer. We're going to go into Topaz. We're going to get Adjust. And this is what I might have typically done. I'm going to reset all. I would go, as I tend to do when I use Adjust, open up the Adaptive Exposure, and I would use these tools. And because there's, let me take a look here. Uh, 800 people, 900 people in this webinar, there might be some who have never used this product. Shame on you if that's true. <laughs> um, it's great. So here, the, the big deal about Adjust are these two sliders. All the other ones are pretty self-explanatory. We're not going to spend a lot of time on the others. Uh, adaptive exposure is like a auto e auto exposure on steroids. It goes from you know, nothing to in your face. But it works hand in hand with, or in concert, or harmony is a better word, with regions. And the region says to the left it's affecting just the outside darks and lights. If I move it to the right, it's including more and more of the tonalities in that image to be affected by this adaptive exposure. And now you see if I pull this way over to the right, it's affecting a lot of the tonalities in this image. And we're now giving it a very different look and I'll try to make this as tasteful as I can. There we go. Not too bad. It's added. It's brightened up in underneath the roof here in the garage. I want that to remain dark. It was in dark shadow. But it's done a great job. Let's click on Here's before, after. So before, after. So really simple moves. I might bring that brightness down just a skosh. I tend to do that. There we go. And the contrast maybe up. Just a, a skosh too. There we go. So that's what we would normally do in Topaz Adjust 5. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to turn on my Clarity one. And now let's go up here to Clarity. Let's see what we get out of Clarity. It's building those presets. Just got to wait and be patient. It was a sunny, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. Look at that, sticky settings, like I said. Uh, believe it or not, it was a sunny blue sky day. So I'm going to select the sunny blue sky. Oops, come on. There we go. You can see it down the bottom, the progress bar is doing its work. And with that, click here's before, after. And you're probably thinking that's pretty darn close, and you would be wrong. So you're going to be surprised at what you see. I'm going to bring that black point back just a little bit because it was a little overdone in the preset. So again, with presets, I have the ability to adjust. That's much better. Uh, now I have what I consider a more contrasty looking image. It was a little flat there because the preset put this black level up a little too high. I take a quick look at my histogram, and it's perfect. I've got, it's not 
uh, clipping on the left, not clipping on the right. Everything's pretty good. But remember now, in Clarity, guess what I have? I have the ability to hide. I'm going to grab the Edgeware brush. I'm going to make that brush size just a little bit bigger. I'm going to make the hardness a little harder. And I'm going to paint in this door because I don't want that adjustment on the door. That felt like that was making that door a little too bright so that I can adjust that here. And by the way, it just you do have a strength slider. Think of this strength slider as being an opacity slider. So if you wanted to remove some of that adjustment and not all of it, you can bring this down and it's going to do just that. It's, only, it's going to paint gray in there instead of black, right? Solid black conceals, you know, a, a variant of gray reveals some but not all. So it, you have even further control there in this, in this mask. In this case, I'm just showing you, again, capabilities. That's all I'm trying to do here because I really like this shadow on the door here. I think that adds a lot. So all I've done is masked out that effect of clarity on that door, but everything else I've left there, and I'm pretty much done. So now let's take a look. So there's clarity. Let's turn that off. There's adjust. Specifically, I would draw your attention to the amount of detail up here in that top. So let's do it again. I'm going to turn that off. Clarity. Turn that off. Adjust. They're different. So how would I characterize adjust? To me, adjust can be used to achieve a more stylized look. Even I remember when I first saw adjust, what, what, uh, what I thought of right away is single image pseudo HDR. And I still use it for that reason. If you like that in your face grungy stylized look, that's what adjust is going to do really, really well. Um, whereas clarity in my mind is a much um, is a much more natural look. And it is natural because that's exactly what the folks at Topaz had in mind when they made the product. The algorithms are all new from the ground up. They don't resemble or have anything to do with the adjust algorithms. They are it's a whole new product from the ground up to give you a more natural look. Another reason why it'll find its way into my workflow more often, except uh, for those times when I want a grungy look, and I have those days too, uh, I'll definitely go back to Topaz Adjust to do that. So hopefully that's helped you to see the differences between the two. Okay, so let's go here. Save, move on. I've got to take a look at my time because, yep, my goodness, these things go by so fast I can't imagine. Uh, I'm going to skip, skip that one, go to this one because this is really quick just as uh, by way of review and kind of uh, I like to cement things going to clarity real quick. This is down in Magnolia Gardens. I finally got down there after years of seeing my buddy Tony Sweet down there killing me with his great images. I finally got a chance to get down there this past year. I'll be going again. It's the Magnolia Gardens specifically is totally worth it. So what's great here? Well, I'm going to do ever so little of my own micro contrast adjustment on this image just to show you how I might use this without the presets. So before, whoops, yeah, done there. Before, after, you're not seeing a whole lot probably on this one. Sorry, guys, I'll bring this one over a little bit, bring this up a little bit more. What I really want to do on this one, though, is go here and show you how I can adjust these various colors. And, and you're going to be amazed at what happens here. So I'm going to bring the green down a little bit. So I'm, I've, what I've done, I'm sorry, I've gotten ahead of myself here. So I've opened up my Hue Saturation Luminosity tab. I'm going over specifically to the luminosity. Again, that's affecting the darkness and lightness of something. And I'm going to the green because what I was seeing in this image is well, these leaves right here were bright, almost as if I didn't use a polarizer. I did, but it didn't have much effect. So here it is without anything. By the way, again, I click on the green. It goes back to zero. Or double click on it. Here, I'll do it again. I'm going to bring it down. I'll overdo it. Notice how on those green leaves, it, it almost looks as if I've used a polarizing filter, doesn't it? 
That's exactly what it looks like to me. I can bring down the luminosity on the yellows, which is most of the other green. I can bring down the luminosity of this magenta or purple, and that's going to affect those other flowers. And even the red, I can, I'm sorry, let's make that darker. I'm going to go over to the saturation, the same thing. Got to be really careful here. You can make these get crazy colors real fast. So very gently, these red here, I brought them out a little bit. The purple, I'm going to saturate that purple just a little bit. And the magenta just a little bit. Now let's take a look at what we've done before, after. Look at that specifically. It's just amazing to me. Look at the green on this tree here. Before, after. But so much more is going on. The depth of this image. Somebody wrote me a, a wonderful note. He's probably listening right now. Um, he, he put it best. It's, it's like it's become three-dimensional. Clarity is is doing something. I wish I knew what their algorithms were doing because it's just great. It's it's taking something that looked great already. I mean, that looked really fine. Had the feel I thought it had. But boy, when you run it through clarity, it's a whole different ball game. And once again, you could open up that mask, and if one of these colors kind of was affecting some red up in here, or there was a barn in the background, or whatever, you could mask that out. So pretty tremendous. Okay, looking at the time, I do want to get through one last thing, and this one last thing is for all of you folks who, like I, are very frustrated with the money grab, oh, I didn't mean to say that, with uh, Adobe and their new subscription-based <laughs> uh, paradigm for Photoshop. <laughs> Did I hear a giggle? <laughs> uh, sorry, sorry about that, but I mean, it just feels like a money grab. Sorry, Adobe. Uh, oops, I opened that up wrong and got ahead of myself. What I want to do is I want to remind you of something that probably gets overlooked. So I'm going to now get out of Photoshop. I am going to completely be in um, the uh, photo, uh, photo effect, oh, I guess that's how you say it, right, photo effects lab. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this image in there because you can do it that way. Right? That's one way to get in there. Let me get this out of the way now. Okay, so here I have another Charleston image. I just want to remind you that this is, this is going to be your new Photoshop moving forward. And let me just give you a teaser here. Remember what I said earlier. The folks at Topaz update their software all the time. Well, guess what all of those folks who do these webinars have been begging for? You got it. Why don't you add things like raw processing capability to Photo Effects Lab? Why don't you add more robust capabilities like, I don't know, clone tools and healing brushes? Now, I'm not, I don't know because they don't tell me. And, you know, I beg and plead and I send chocolates and all these things. No, maybe, I, don't, I don't think I've sent chocolate chips, but that's not a bad idea. I'm going to send chocolates and maybe they'll tell me, but I have a funny feeling you know, in the next months ahead, we're going to see, because of Adobe's choices, this particular product become much more robust. Because look what we have. The same keystrokes that I use in Photoshop, I can go ahead and create. So Command-J, Alter-Option-J, and I can create a background layer. I can uh, rename that. Uh, hold on here. Let me get that. Why is that? Come on, John. Double click so you can do that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Isn't that the way life goes when you want to do things? But there we go. I can rename this to be Clarity, let's say, and I'm struggling to rename that. Sorry about that. My bad. Uh, let's move on because I see the time. I can open up Clarity, and because of time, I'm not going to do much here. I think I've done a good enough job of, of showing you, so I'm just going to pick one and apply it because, again, I just want to show you and remind you of what you can do within this piece of software. We can pick uh, general. Oops, it's got to go through and just build those again. And I'm going to come in and do, OK, we're almost done. It's just doing those previews. I'll do something like. A micro contrast boost. There we go. So before, after, probably can't see much of it. Doesn't matter. The blacks got blacker. The stairs got a lot more detail. You already know all that I can do in there. We've showed you that a few times. But look, so we can now have the same 
like Photoshop. I can turn that layer on and off. I have the ability to adjust the opacity of that layer, just like Photoshop. I have blend modes over here, like uh, soft light and hard light. In, in all the blend modes that I have in Photoshop. And yes, I have masking capability. Different than the masking capability that we have in the new Clarity, that'll be even better when they add that into this, and I'm sure they will. All right, and so you have those masking capabilities. And now I can do from this stack, it's, consider this like a stamp layer, I can click this plus down the bottom of the screen, to a stamp layer, which means it's going to include everything that's been done below it and add another layer. And now what I can do is come over here to black and white effects. Two, and I'll just leave it at this. It's just what we did in the last one. Um, you know, I can add a, uh, a, a vignette and all those things if I want to, but again, we're just trying to leave this webinar with this concept. and. And, and show you. And now look what I can do. So I can go in this mask. I have edge aware again available to me, right? I can make my brush size a certain size. And just to show you the power here, I can go paint on this pole. And if you have a color that you want to bring back in one of your photographs, voila. <laughs> it's that easy. How cool is that? And, and because of the edge aware technology, look, it does a great job of just selecting that color. Whoops, it's gone over. He bled over because I'm using such a big brush. Obviously, I'd be a little more careful. I mean, we're running out of time, and I can't be careful. But all, I'm, all I want to point out to you is at this point, you have all of the use of all of your plugins from Topaz. You have them in layers. You have blend modes, opacity. You have pretty much all you have in Photoshop. If we bring in raw processing capability and we have some output things like printing and all those things that we might think of Lightroom having, um, you'll have a pretty darn good product. It's great the way it is right now. You, are, you can do lots of things and finish products right from here. Uh, I just have a funny feeling it's going to get more robust as we move forward. So we're out of time. I want to leave some time for some questions. Uh, again, thanks to Topaz. Hopefully this has been helpful again. I feel like we spent a fair amount of time on Clarity, but I couldn't help it. It's really that good. I like it a lot. I've used it on every image since I've gotten it. Uh, but be that said, I, I did want to touch on things like um, uh, Detail 3, which you, gets used a lot. Black and white effects gets used a lot. And adjust will still be used. It's just it becomes for a, for a different reason. So, so the bundle is always the best deal, especially with what Nicole's going to talk about here in a minute. Um, you'll need to get clar clarity as a separate one. Uh, every time they introduce a new program, it is something that you need to pay for until it gets included into a bundle. Uh, and then uh, uh, FX Labs is a separate uh, piece of software as well, but the as you'll find out from Nicole coming up here, the, the code, the discount code, the good discount code will be applied to all those things. So let's turn it over for some questions, Nicole. Uh-oh, is she sleeping? <laughs> no, I just have to turn my mic on. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Um, let's see here. That was awesome. Thank you so much. We have had a ton of great feedback, people who say that they finally see the advantage of clarity, so I'm glad that you are oh, able to good. make that clear, no pun intended. Okay. <laughs> That's good. You know, I had the same reaction, folks. For those who are listening still, uh, and it looks like most are, uh, whenever I get a new piece of software, I, my, I highly encourage you to just crank those sliders to the right and to the left and really start to understand what's happening. And that's the best way to really start to learn. And the revelation, I mean, the revelation for me is those tonal sliders in addition with those contrast sliders, my goodness, it's, it's fantastic. It really is. Game changer. I stick by that. I, I don't say that. I've not said that about any product coming out in a long time, but this one's a game changer for me. Awesome. Well, thank you. We worked hard on it. It's fun. Um, Good. Let's see here. Good work. Okay. Um, let's see here. Barbara asked, uh, "Would you do certain adjustments in Lightroom before going into Clarity? Like, what would your personal workflow be there?" Yeah. Great question, Barbara. I, absolutely. Uh, as frustrated as I am with Adobe, uh, I did for the first time upgraded to 
uh, Photoshop 6 and Lightroom 4 because, rather than skipping a generation, because the raw converter, quite candidly, is great. I mean, it, it was, well, that's probably the other time I might have said Game Changer, actually. I take that back because it really is that good. So I would now do, I do try to do as much as I possibly can in Adobe Camera Raw or in Lightroom in that same develop module, uh, and then bring that in and start using uh, the tools in, in Topaz. Okay, great. Um, let's see here. Cynthia says you're the best, and you can tell him I said so. <laughs> I Thank you, Cynthia. I love you, too. <laughs> I know who that is. <laughs> um, Beth asks or says, it seems to her that clarity adjustments resemble HDR. How do you think they compare? Oh, that's interesting. So clarity adjustments resemble HDR. Boy, I don't think so. I think it's much more natural to that. Remember, um, I tend to overdo things in a webinar so that they show up, uh, so that they're visible to you and you have an idea of the concept and, and what's happening. Uh, my philosophy in, in the processing is always that I don't want you to look at one of my images and say, oh, look, he used you know, a pseudo HDR effect. That, that's not something I strive for. I want it to be somewhat more natural. So I will just say it again. Clarity, when used lovingly and carefully, is very natural looking. Topaz, uh, I'm sorry, Topaz, adjust <laughs> rather, adjust can easily look affected, absolutely. Uh, but even that, if you're careful with it, I've used it many times and people have no idea. So as with any tool, you need to use it with great care and thought, not just, you know, slam it on there. Yeah, I agree. Um, and uh, it can, you know, open up, I think, your high dynamic range a little bit or, or make it a little bit more, but you don't get that more affected look like you would in another program. Absolutely, yeah. You bet. So, yeah, that's a good thank you for, for saying that, Nicole, because that's true. You certainly can, with clarity, push it to the point where it does look much more like a, an HDR look, but you don't need to, and yeah. you can get wonderful, beautiful effects that are very natural looking. Yep. Agreed. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Philip says, uh, can't you do your HSL adjustments um, in another program? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you can do those, as I said, you can do those in Photoshop. Uh, you can do them in Camera Raw. You can. You have those same, it looks very similar to what we just saw here in, in um, Lightroom. Here's the big difference. You can't mask it like you can here. So the masking capability changes it for me. It, it's really a, a different world with that really great masking capability. So the answer is, you bet, you can do it elsewhere. Uh, here we've added their edge-aware edge masking capability and all those good tools that takes it to a little bit of a different level for me. Cool. Thanks for uh, explaining that a little bit. Okay. Let's see here. I have um, Linda asking... Would you uh, suggest using Clarity after using an HDR program? Good question. <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Um, you know, typically, you know what? Yes, <laughs> I'll ju I'm just kind of thinking through that. Uh, for instance, when I do my workshops and then we go over HDR, I always say at the end of doing your HDR work, I don't care which HDR program you're using as good as they have become, usually they still look a little bit flat. And so heretofore, I've been doing some other things from a company that I wouldn't name right now. <laughs> uh, but this, this now changes that. So instead of using company X to doing some tonal contrast work, and that'll give it away, I will now be coming over to Clarity for sure, because it'll do it in a much more natural way, again, with more uh, capability. So there you go. Thanks, Thanks for letting me think that one through. Yes, <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> All right. And um, I have Stanley asking, can you explain when you could use details in addition to clarity, to has detail Gosh. in addition to clarity? Yeah, that's got to be my buddy, Stan Silverman. You know, Stan, you should be able to answer these questions on your own, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Dan is great with Photoshop and all these tools. He's the one. And I love his images. <laughs> well, and let me tell you what, he's, he's a great photographer, and he, yeah. I have to give a shout-out to Stan.
Stan. The only reason I'm here doing this today is because of Stan. He's the one who introduced me to Topaz a number of years ago. He found you at the trade show in New York City. I had no idea, walked right by you. He bought the software and says, man, you need to try this. So thanks, Stan. So let's get back to Stan's question. Well, I'll do, a, I'll do another little shout out. He has a great gallery on our Topaz Labs gallery page, which yes. I really enjoy. So. There you go. <laughs> uh, and uh, so the question was, would I go, what was the question? Uh, when you um, should, can, he said, can you explain when you could use Topaz Detail in addition to Topaz Clarity? Right, okay. So the best way to think about it, Stan, and all others listening, once again, detail you should be thinking about as a creative and output uh, sharpening, right? So, um, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, so, so detail. Yeah, let's go, go through this again. So detail. So best detail, detail should be thought of as a creative sharpening and or an output sharpening. So just like I showed the woman's face, I use clarity as advanced contrast enhancements, right? Because that's what it is. Clarity, think of as an, an advanced contrast enhancement where you're giving that image punch and depth. Hopefully that makes sense. So punch and depth or pop and depth, just like the clarity slider does in Adobe Camera Raw, right? But you have so much more control with clarity. That's what you're doing. You're not doing your final sharpening with it. That's where you would then jump into detail and you would do that final sharpening and or if you wanted to do some creative type of sharpening, which you and I don't tend to do, Stan. So you're going to use it more very subtly and gently, almost as a sharpening tool. So once again, if, you, if you're saying to heck with Adobe or you don't have Adobe and you want to have your own standalone program, detail would be your sharpening, output sharpening tool. Do you disagree with any of that, Nicole? No, I, I definitely agree with that. And I was actually just kind of looking at another question as you were answering that from Jeffrey, um, who asked, uh, would you de-blur first in Clarity or last, or does it matter? And I'll just go ahead and answer real go quick. Yep. Um, if you're trying to um, do something more like a... Um, a capture sharpener or a, a slight, slight, slight de-blur, then I would go with In Focus, Jeffrey, before any other program because Clarity is not does not have a de-blur tool and it does not affect your edges or anything like that. It's If you look at it at one-to-one, -one, you'll notice it only affects your contrast. So it's um, a, very different when looked at at 100% then. Yeah, and that's a good, great suggestion there, Nicole, is to look at these things 100%. So let's kind of review real quick. In focus would be considered a capture sharpener, meaning all digital captures, although now the new cameras without an anti-aliasing filter like the Fuji XE1 uh, that I own, um, you probably don't even need in focus anymore. But if you have a traditional anti-aliasing filter type camera, you know, a D700, a D300, uh, uh, any of the Canons uh, have them, you would use InFocus as your capture sharpener, and it's almost imperceptible, it's very low level, and then you would either use detail or adjust, right, detail being, I'm sorry, clarity or adjust, so clarity being for that contrast adjustment, and as you just heard Nicole say, if you look at it one-to-one -one or 100%, it's not adjusting the edges, it's just the contrast, whereas detail is going to adjust the edges, whereas Topaz adjust will adjust the edges as well as contrast, right? So so the, the workflow can kind of be in focus to get that uh, capture sharpening, pick your tool of choice, in my mind, clarity to do some contrast adjustments, and then your final output sharpening detail. Yes, exactly. There you go. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, let's see here. A couple more questions. Oh, and then we get to give away stuff. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, we've had a ton of great feedback, so that's awesome. Okay, and then I have um, John asking if you had your top three plugins, what would they be now? Uh, the black and white, the clarity, and detail. Cool. All right. Thank but, you. But, the, but guys, don't forget, I mean, if you have noise, even though cameras are getting better, better with noise, denoise is the best in the business. You know, that comes with the bundle. You know, so you can't turn that away. And adjust is still going to be used. That comes with the bundle. But anyways, those are my top three. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And we hope you have a good evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are. And hope you can join us again. Thanks. Bye-bye now.